2023 really was the year of the dragon. That is, the year of the dragon of Dojima, since we were blessed with not one, but two entries to the Like a Dragon series starring Kazuma Kiryu with a third to follow shortly the year after. I reviewed Like a Dragon Ishin, the remake, on release having had the review code from Sega. However, that wasn't the case for the main series side story, Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, or the full sequel, Infinite Wealth, that followed. Now, as I'm nearing the end of Infinite Wealth, I felt I needed to share my thoughts on that game, but with Gaiden so closely tied to it, it's only right that I review what is perhaps Kiryu's final solo adventure before I do Infinite Wealth. So here we go, here is our review of Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. Before we get started, for full transparency, I played Like a Dragon Gaiden on Xbox Series X, so these are my thoughts on that particular version. Additionally, as I said, no review codes were provided and I played this game using my own Game Pass subscription. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, kicks off after Yakuza 6 with our hero working for the shadowy Daidoji government faction, for whom Kiryu works to maintain the pretense of his death in order to protect the kids at his Okinawa orphanage. As such, Kiryu now works under the alias Joryu, carrying out various ops for his shady employer. However, an attack from an organized gang who have somehow surmised Kiryu's true identity sets in motion the chain of events that sees the Dragon of Dojima sent to Sotenbori as part of a contract that inevitably ties with the Yakuza organizations of Tojo clan, Kiryu's former employers, and the Omi Alliance, Tojo's rival throughout the series. The setting serves several purposes. Firstly, it answers the question of what happened to Kazama Kiryu after he faked his death at the end of Yakuza 6. Secondly, this side story runs in parallel to Ichiban Kasuga's escapades in Yakuza 7, providing an alternative point of view to some of the biggest moments from that game, while also paving the way for Like a Dragon 8 Infinite Wealth. Finally, it lets us engage in the classic brawler adventure game stylings of the first seven Yakuza games with its chief protagonist. While the majority of the game doesn't take place in Camarocho, meaning the full nostalgic Yakuza experience is somewhat incomplete, Sotenbori is the perfect replacement, especially given the prominence of the locale since Yakuza 2 and the potential narrative headaches should Kiryu walks around his old haunts in Camarocho. Ijinchyo also stars prominently in the opening and last segments of the game, and it's nice to see that area from Yakuza 7 get some additional airtime. The man who erased his name then walks a path that you could say is well trodden by the series at this point, but in all honesty, this is a path that feels like it has been polished to near perfection. Movement through the open world on Xbox Series X is fast and fluid. There's minimal loading and a 60 frame per second target that I don't think missed the beat. Sotenbori and Ijinsho are a joy to traverse and feature all of the activities and features you'd expect, albeit many with a twist. The same can be said for the combat. After the move to turn-based battles in the prior game in the series, it feels great to slip into Kiryu's shoes once again to absolutely hammer waves of goons on the streets of Japan. The twist this time is Kiryu's new abilities, courtesy of the Daidoji. Kiryu's James Bond impression goes beyond his black suit. He has an abundance of gadgets at his disposal. My favourite is the Spider, a lasso style attack which he whips around enemies. You also get your hands on drones and the ability to boost around the area, knocking enemies asunder. If that's not your bag, you can switch back to the classic brawler style and beat down your enemies in the old fashioned way. It goes without saying that the combat is a particular highlight here and definitely up there with the best in the series, if not the best interpretation of it. Great exploration and combat are excellent, but their impact is lessened if there isn't a bunch of compelling content. Thankfully, Like a Dragon Gaiden has plenty to do and in a variety of new and interesting ways. The usual sub-story system has been replaced by a similar but more dynamic Akami network which sees you solve various sub-stories in return for Akami points, which allows you to shop for items and access very other benefits and perks in the game. And this ties in with my favorite side content, the castle. The castle is essentially a lawless casino held on a ship that features heavily in Garden's story. But from a side quest perspective, 
it's home to the Colosseum. In the Colosseum, as you'd expect, Kiryu battles through the ranks of various combat scenarios. The most madcap of all of these are the Hell Rumbles. In these, you take a band of up to 10 other combatants to fight a horde of increasingly powerful enemies. These battles are truly a spectacle, especially the Hell Team Rumble, where dozens of characters smash the ever-loving crap out of one another until only one team is left standing. This all ties in brilliantly together with other aspects of the game as you spend time recruiting, training and unlocking team members to fight beside you. Once again, I feel this complements the best in class combat and what I feel is the best Colosseum mode in the series. Beyond that, there's the usual mini game fair with golf, darts and karaoke all making an appearance. There's also a cabaret club mini game which features real footage of club girls. I found it a little bit unnerving personally, but hey, if that's your sort of thing. For content that won't earn you the chiding from your significant other, there's plenty of Sega gaming goodness in here. For a shady government faction, the Daidoji has a great taste in games, as they have a Sega Master System hidden in their back rooms for Kiryu to play. It comes with a number of games from the start, but more can be unlocked through various means. But the highlight is clearly in the arcade. Motor Raid, Fighting Vipers 2, Sonic the Fighters and Virtua Fighter 2 are all heavy hitters, fantastic arcade experiences all in their own way. Vipers and Virtua Fighter 2 are obviously all time greats, but Motor Raid is an utterly fantastic experience that I spend plenty of time on. Of course, all of these games have been playable in past Yakuza and Judgment games, but there is one new arcade game and it's an absolute doozy. Sega Racing Classic 2 represents the first time ever that the legendary Daytona USA 2 arcade game has come home in any form. And fans will not be disappointed with a game that plays like an absolute dream and still looks absolutely astonishing for a title that released in 1998. Seriously, this is almost worth picking up the game on its own merit. Of course, in the end, you'll come back to the story, and once again, the game absolutely delivers with a well-paced, high-stakes adventure that not only thrills, but has some unexpected emotional beats. There's plenty of drama and twists for a story we probably can already surmise the end based on the other games, but that doesn't make it any less compelling. And that probably sums up Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. It's an adventure where you know what to expect in terms of content and story but it has sufficient polish in the gameplay and enough surprises that it keeps series veterans happy. This deep into the series, it's tough to envision how newcomers may acclimatize to the story. And for that, Yakuza 0 is still the recommended starting point for anyone who hasn't touched the series yet. But even as a game in its own merits, Like a Dragon Gaiden serves as one of Kiryu's finest adventures. And it's just a fantastic video game overall, one that's filled with charm, style, and unrelenting entertainment to satisfy almost any gamer. To that end, it's a fantastic embodiment of the series and of modern Sega itself. This has been Dan the Mega Driver of the Sega Guys and we will see you on the Sega side.